Characteristics of Caribbean economies Caribbean economies possess distinct features that contribute to their unique economic landscape. One of the primary characteristics is their relatively small population and land size. Due to these factors, the scale of economic activities in the region is typically more compact compared to larger nations. Furthermore, Caribbean economies frequently depend on a limited range of resources to sustain their economic development. Agriculture, tourism, and natural resources play pivotal roles in their economic sectors. These industries often serve as major drivers of revenue generation and employment opportunities within the region. It is essential to acknowledge the historical influence of colonialism and dependency on the economic structures of many Caribbean nations. These economies have experienced a legacy of colonization, with European powers exerting control and exploiting the region's resources for their benefit. The repercussions of this colonial history are evident in the economic relationships Caribbean nations maintain with external countries. In summary, the Caribbean economies possess key characteristics, including small population and land size, reliance on specific resources, and a historical legacy of colonialism and dependency. These factors significantly shape their economic structures and relationships with the broader global community. Major economic challenges faced by Caribbean economies Caribbean economies confront significant economic challenges that have a profound impact on their overall development. These challenges encompass a range of issues, including high levels of debt burden, vulnerability to external shocks, limited industry diversification, unemployment and underemployment, income inequality, and restricted access to financial resources for development. 1. High levels of debt burden. Many Caribbean nations struggle with substantial levels of debt, which can hinder economic growth and impede investment in crucial sectors. Accumulated debt obligations place a strain on government finances, making it difficult to allocate resources towards development initiatives and public services. 2. Vulnerability to external shocks. Caribbean economies are particularly susceptible to external shocks, such as natural disasters and fluctuations in global commodity prices. The region's geographic location exposes it to frequent hurricanes, earthquakes, and other natural calamities, which can devastate infrastructure, disrupt industries, and strain government resources. Additionally, changes in global commodity prices, such as fluctuations in tourism or agricultural markets, can significantly impact revenue streams for Caribbean nations. 3. Limited diversification of industries. Many Caribbean economies heavily rely on a narrow range of industries, often centered around agriculture and tourism. This lack of diversification exposes them to risks associated with market volatility and global economic downturns. Insufficient diversification can hinder resilience and hinder the ability to adapt to changing economic circumstances. 4. Unemployment and underemployment. Caribbean economies frequently grapple with high levels of unemployment and underemployment, especially among the youth. Limited employment opportunities, coupled with population growth, contribute to this challenge. Insufficient job creation exacerbates social and economic inequalities, hindering sustainable development. 5. Income inequality. Caribbean nations experience varying degrees of income inequality with a significant portion of the population facing limited access to economic opportunities and social services. This inequality can hinder social cohesion, perpetuate poverty cycles, and hinder overall economic progress. 6. Limited access to financial resources for development. Access to financial resources for development is often constrained in Caribbean economies. These nations face challenges in attracting foreign investment, accessing affordable credit, and mobilizing domestic resources for productive investments. This limited access can impede infrastructure development, education, healthcare, and other essential sectors. In summary, Caribbean economies confront several major economic challenges, including high levels of debt burden, vulnerability to external shocks, limited industry diversification, unemployment and underemployment, income inequality and limited access to financial resources for development. 
Addressing these challenges requires comprehensive strategies and targeted interventions to foster sustainable economic growth and enhance the well-being of the population. Definitions of terms and concepts explained. When exploring various subjects, it is essential to establish a clear understanding of the terms and concepts involved. Definitions provide the groundwork for comprehension and enable effective communication. Here are explanations of key terms and concepts commonly encountered in different fields. 1. Term. A term refers to a word or phrase that represents a specific idea, object, or concept. It serves as a building block for effective communication and facilitates shared understanding within a particular domain or context. 2. Concept. A concept is an abstract or general idea that represents a category or class of objects, events, or phenomena. Concepts help organize knowledge and provide a framework for understanding and analyzing the world around us. They are often expressed through words or symbols and can be interconnected to form complex theories or models. It's worth noting that the definitions of terms and concepts may vary depending on the field or discipline in which they are used. Different contexts can shape the precise meaning and implications of these terms. Therefore, it is crucial to consider the specific context when interpreting and applying these definitions. Understanding the definitions of terms and concepts is fundamental to engaging in meaningful discussions, conducting research, and advancing knowledge within a particular field. By clarifying these definitions, individuals can navigate complex subjects more effectively and promote accurate and coherent communication. Debt Burden – Understanding its impact on economic development Debt burden refers to the cumulative amount of debt that a country owes to various creditors, both domestic and foreign. It encompasses government debt, corporate debt, and household debt, among others. The level of debt a country carries has significant implications for its financial health, economic stability, and ability to meet debt obligations while investing in sustainable development. The debt burden is a crucial metric that gauges the financial obligations a country must fulfill. When a nation's debt burden becomes excessive, it can lead to adverse consequences. Here are some key points to consider regarding the impact of debt burden on economic development. 1. Debt repayments. A high debt burden can strain a country's finances, as a substantial portion of its revenue is allocated to debt servicing. When a significant portion of the national budget is used to repay debts, it leaves limited resources available for crucial public investments in areas such as infrastructure, education, healthcare, and social welfare programs. This can hinder economic development and impede efforts to improve the quality of life for citizens. 2. Economic stability. A heavy debt burden can undermine a country's economic stability. High levels of debt increase the risk of default which can lead to a loss of investor confidence, higher borrowing costs, and restricted access to credit markets. These factors can further hinder economic growth and exacerbate financial vulnerabilities, making it challenging for the country to attract investments and stimulate economic activity. 3. Opportunity cost. The resources allocated to debt repayment could have been used for productive investments that promote long-term economic growth. When a country's debt burden is excessively high, it limits the availability of funds for critical sectors such as education, healthcare, infrastructure development, and research and development. Consequently, the country may miss out on opportunities to enhance productivity, competitiveness, and overall economic well-being. 4. Macroeconomic imbalances. A heavy debt burden can contribute to macroeconomic imbalances, such as inflation and currency depreciation. In order to service their debts, countries may resort to printing more money or borrowing from foreign sources, which can lead to inflationary pressures. Additionally, if debt repayments require significant foreign currency, it can put pressure on the country's exchange rate, potentially leading to currency depreciation and external vulnerabilities. Managing the debt burden is crucial for countries to ensure sustainable economic development. Effective debt management strategies including prudent borrowing practices, debt restructuring, and implementing sound fiscal policies, are essential to mitigate the risks associated with high debt levels and promote long-term economic stability.
In summary, debt burden represents the total amount of debt that a country owes, and its impact on economic development should not be underestimated. By comprehending the implications of debt burden, policymakers can make informed decisions to strike a balance between debt repayment obligations and investments in critical sectors, fostering sustainable economic growth and improving the well-being of the population. Structural Adjustment – Promoting Economic Growth and Stability Through Policy Reforms Structural adjustment refers to a set of economic policies implemented by governments, often in collaboration with international financial institutions, to address macroeconomic imbalances and stimulate sustainable economic growth. These policies typically involve a series of measures aimed at improving fiscal stability, enhancing market efficiency, and promoting private sector development. Here's an expanded explanation of structural adjustment and its key components. 1. Macroeconomic imbalances, structural adjustment policies are typically introduced when a country faces significant macroeconomic imbalances, such as high inflation, fiscal deficits, unsustainable levels of public debt, or balance of payment difficulties. These imbalances can hinder economic growth, erode investor confidence, and restrict the availability of financial resources. 2. Fiscal austerity measures. One of the main components of structural adjustment involves implementing fiscal austerity measures. This often includes reducing government spending, cutting subsidies, and increasing tax revenues to address budget deficits and stabilize public finances. These measures aim to reduce reliance on borrowing, promote fiscal discipline, and create a favorable environment for private sector investment. 3. Privatization Structural adjustment programs often encourage privatization, which involves transferring ownership and management of state-owned enterprises to the private sector. Privatization aims to improve the efficiency and competitiveness of these enterprises, reduce the burden on government finances, and promote market-driven competition. 4. Market-oriented reforms. Structural adjustment policies also emphasize market-oriented reforms, including deregulation, liberalization, and trade openness. Deregulation seeks to remove unnecessary bureaucratic barriers and promote business-friendly environments. Liberalization entails reducing restrictions on capital flows, encouraging foreign direct investment, and opening up domestic markets to global competition. Trade openness involves reducing trade barriers, such as tariffs and quotas, to enhance international trade and market integration. 5. Social safety nets. To mitigate the potential negative impacts of structural adjustment policies on vulnerable populations, social safety nets are often put in place. These safety nets include measures such as targeted welfare programs, unemployment benefits, and access to healthcare and education. They aim to alleviate the short-term adverse effects of policy reforms and promote social equity. 6. Long-term economic growth. The ultimate goal of structural adjustment is to promote sustainable economic growth and development. By addressing macroeconomic imbalances, improving market efficiency, and encouraging private sector participation, these policies aim to create an environment conducive to investment, entrepreneurship, and innovation. The objective is to achieve long-term economic stability, poverty reduction, and improved living standards. It is important to note that structural adjustment policies have been subject to criticism and debate. Some argue that the implementation of these policies can lead to social inequality, job losses, and weakened public services. Therefore, it is crucial to carefully design and implement structural adjustment programs in a manner that considers the specific needs and circumstances of each country. In summary, structural adjustment encompasses a range of economic policies implemented to address macroeconomic imbalances and promote sustainable economic growth. These policies involve fiscal austerity measures, privatization of state-owned enterprises, market-oriented reforms, and the establishment of social safety nets. The overarching objective is to achieve long-term economic stability and improved living standards for the population. Economic Integration Enhancing cooperation and coordination through reduced trade barriers. Economic integration refers to a multifaceted process that involves the gradual reduction of barriers to trade and investment among countries. This process aims to foster increased economic cooperation, 
coordination, and integration between participating nations. By breaking down barriers, economic integration seeks to facilitate the flow of goods, services, capital, and labor across borders. Here's an expanded explanation of economic integration and its implications. 1. Trade barriers. Trade barriers encompass various measures that impede the smooth flow of goods and services between countries. These barriers may include tariffs, import taxes, quotas, limits on imported goods, non-tariff barriers, regulatory restrictions, and other forms of protectionist policies. Economic integration initiatives focus on reducing or eliminating these barriers to create a more open and integrated trading environment. 2. Regional trade agreements. Economic integration often takes place through the formation of regional trade agreements. These agreements involve a group of countries within a specific geographic region coming together to establish preferential trading arrangements. Examples include free trade agreements, FTAs, customs unions, common markets, and economic unions. Regional trade agreements aim to promote closer economic ties, streamline trade procedures, and harmonize regulations among member countries. 3. Increased market access. Economic integration leads to expanded market access for participating countries. By reducing trade barriers, businesses gain access to larger consumer markets, allowing for increased trade volumes and potential growth opportunities. Access to new markets enhances competitiveness, encourages specialization, and promotes efficiency through economies of scale. 4. Foreign direct investment, FDI economic integration can attract higher levels of foreign direct investment. As trade barriers are lowered, investors are more inclined to seek opportunities in integrated economies. FDI brings capital, technology, and expertise, which can foster economic growth, create job opportunities, and stimulate innovation within the participating countries. 5. Economic coordination and cooperation. Economic integration initiatives often involve coordinated policies and regulatory frameworks among member countries. This coordination aims to enhance economic stability, harmonize rules and standards, and promote mutually beneficial cooperation. Examples include aligning fiscal policies, coordinating monetary policies, and establishing common regulatory frameworks. 6. Potential challenges while economic integration offers numerous benefits, it can also present challenges. These may include adjustments to domestic industries and sectors, potential job displacements, and the need for institutional capacity building to effectively implement integration measures. It is crucial for participating countries to carefully manage these challenges to ensure equitable distribution of benefits and mitigate any adverse effects. Economic integration plays a significant role in fostering regional and global economic growth. By reducing barriers to trade and investment, it promotes efficient allocation of resources, encourages specialization, and drives innovation. Ultimately, economic integration aims to create a more interconnected and prosperous global economy through enhanced cooperation and coordination among nations. Protectionism, shielding domestic industries through trade barriers. Protectionism refers to the adoption of trade barriers by a country to safeguard its domestic industries from foreign competition. These trade barriers, such as tariffs, quotas, and other restrictive measures, aim to shield local businesses and industries from the perceived negative effects of international trade. Here's an expanded explanation of protectionism and its implications. 1. Trade barriers. Protectionist policies are implemented through various trade barriers. Tariffs are taxes imposed on imported goods, making them more expensive and less competitive in the domestic market. Quotas set limits on the quantity of specific imported goods, controlling their availability. Other trade barriers include subsidies, discriminatory regulations, and administrative barriers that make it more difficult for foreign competitors to access the domestic market. 2. Domestic Industry Protection the primary objective of protectionism is to safeguard domestic industries from foreign competition. Advocates argue that protecting local industries helps preserve jobs, ensures the growth of strategic sectors, and maintains national self-sufficiency in essential goods. By limiting foreign competition, 
Domestic industries can potentially benefit from reduced competitive pressure and have the opportunity to develop and expand. 3. Market distortions. Protectionist measures can distort market dynamics. By imposing barriers, countries manipulate supply and demand forces, altering the natural allocation of resources. This can lead to inefficiencies, reduced consumer choice, and higher prices for imported goods. Distorted markets may hinder innovation, limit access to new technologies, and discourage productivity improvements that can result from exposure to international competition. 4. Retaliation and trade wars. Protectionist policies by one country can trigger retaliation from trading partners. This can escalate into trade wars, where countries impose tit-for-tat trade barriers on each other, leading to reduced overall trade volumes and potentially harming all involved economies. Trade wars can disrupt global supply chains, reduce business confidence, and negatively impact economic growth on a broader scale. 5. Economic Consequences Protectionism can have adverse economic consequences. By reducing competition, it can discourage efficiency gains and innovation, limiting overall economic growth potential. Higher import prices due to tariffs can increase costs for domestic businesses and consumers. Reduced access to foreign markets may also limit export opportunities for domestic industries, hindering their growth and international competitiveness. 6. Regional trade blocks. Protectionist tendencies can influence countries to form regional trade blocks, such as customs unions or free trade agreements, as a means of balancing protectionist measures with increased regional integration. These trade blocks aim to foster greater market access among member countries while preserving some level of protection for domestic industries. It is essential to note that while protectionism may be implemented with the intention of shielding domestic industries, its long-term effects are subject to debate. Critics argue that protectionism can lead to inefficiencies, hinder innovation, reduce consumer welfare, and hinder global economic cooperation. In summary, protectionism involves the use of trade barriers to shield domestic industries from foreign competition. While it aims to protect local businesses, it can distort markets, trigger trade conflicts, and have negative economic consequences. Balancing the interests of domestic industries and the benefits of open and fair international trade is a complex challenge for policymakers seeking to navigate the dynamics of globalization and economic integration. Laissez-faire, allowing market forces to shape economic activities. Laissez-faire is an economic approach that advocates for minimal government intervention in economic activities, giving prominence to the role of market forces in determining prices and resource allocation. Under this approach, the government's involvement in the economy is limited, and the belief is that free markets and individual actors can efficiently regulate economic affairs. Here's an expanded explanation of laissez-faire and its implications. 1. Limited government intervention. Laissez-faire promotes the idea that the government should refrain from interfering with economic activities as much as possible. It advocates for minimal regulation, intervention, and control over markets, aiming to allow individuals and businesses to operate freely without undue restrictions or burdensome regulations. 2. Market forces. Laissez-faire recognizes the significance of market forces, such as supply and demand, in determining prices, quantities, and the allocation of resources. According to this approach, prices are set through the interactions of buyers and sellers in competitive markets, reflecting the underlying forces of supply and demand. Market forces are considered efficient in allocating resources based on consumer preferences and productive capabilities. 3. Individual freedom and property rights. Laissez-faire emphasizes the importance of individual freedom and property rights. It argues that individuals have the right to own and control private property and that they should have the freedom to engage in voluntary exchanges. The protection of property rights and contract enforcement is seen as essential for the functioning of free markets and economic growth. 4. Spontaneous order. Laissez-faire is associated with the concept of spontaneous order, where a complex and orderly system emerges through the decentralized actions and interactions of individuals pursuing their self-interests. 
It suggests that when individuals are free to make their own decisions and engage in voluntary transactions, an efficient and harmonious economic order can emerge without central planning or control. 5. Benefits and Criticisms Proponents of laissez-faire argue that it promotes economic efficiency, innovation, and economic growth by allowing market forces to guide resource allocation and promote competition. They believe that excessive government intervention can stifle entrepreneurship and hinder market dynamics. However, critics argue that laissez-faire can lead to negative externalities, market failures, and inequalities. They argue that government intervention is necessary to address market imperfections, provide public goods, and ensure fair and equitable outcomes. 6. Mixed Economy In practice, most economies adopt a mixed economic system that combines elements of laissez-faire and government intervention. While laissez-faire principles are influential in shaping economic policies, governments often intervene to address market failures, promote social welfare, regulate industries, and provide public goods and services. It is important to note that the extent of laissez-faire and government intervention can vary across countries and over time, as societies adapt their economic systems to address evolving challenges and societal needs. In summary, laissez-faire is an economic approach that advocates for minimal government intervention, allowing market forces to shape economic activities. It emphasizes the role of free markets, individual freedom, and property rights. While it has been influential in shaping economic thought and policies, most economies adopt a mixed economic system that combines laissez-faire principles with government intervention to address market failures and promote societal well-being. Common market, facilitating economic integration and free movement. A common market is a form of economic integration in which member countries eliminate trade barriers, allow the free movement of goods, services, capital, and labor, and adopt a common external trade policy. This type of integration aims to deepen economic cooperation and integration among participating nations. Here's an expanded explanation of the concept of a common market and its key characteristics. 1. Trade Barrier Elimination In a common market, member countries strive to eliminate trade barriers among themselves. This includes reducing or eliminating tariffs, import taxes, quotas, limits on imported goods, and other restrictions on the movement of goods and services. By removing these barriers, member countries aim to enhance trade flows and promote economic cooperation. 2. Free movement of goods, services, capital, and labor. A distinctive feature of a common market is the free movement of goods, services, capital, and labor. Member countries allow for unrestricted movement of these factors of production within the common market area. This means that goods can be traded freely, services can be provided across borders, capital can flow without restrictions, and individuals can work and reside in different member countries. 3. Harmonized regulations and standards. To facilitate seamless economic integration, common markets often strive for harmonization of regulations and standards among member countries. This ensures consistency and compatibility in areas such as product safety, technical specifications, and legal frameworks. Harmonization helps reduce barriers to trade and enhances the efficiency of cross-border economic activities. 4. Common external trade policy. A common market typically adopts a unified external trade policy. This means that member countries negotiate trade agreements and establish a common approach to trade relations with countries outside the common market area. By coordinating their external trade policies, common markets can present a more united and influential front in international trade negotiations and enhance their bargaining power. 5. Economic Benefits Common markets offer several economic benefits to member countries. By eliminating trade barriers, They facilitate a larger and more integrated market, allowing for economies of scale, increased specialization, and greater market access. The free movement of capital and labor fosters investment, encourages entrepreneurship, and enhances the mobility of skilled workers. These factors can lead to increased productivity, economic growth, and job opportunities within the common market area. 6. Regional Integration Common markets are a form of regional integration, 
promoting closer economic ties among participating countries within a specific geographic region. They aim to enhance regional cooperation, strengthen economic interdependence, and foster a sense of shared economic goals and benefits. It's important to note that common markets are often part of a broader continuum of economic integration, with deeper forms of integration such as economic unions or political unions building upon the foundation of a common market. In summary, a common market is a form of economic integration that eliminates trade barriers, allows the free movement of goods, services, capital, and labor, and adopts a common external trade policy. It aims to deepen economic cooperation, create a larger and more integrated market, and enhance regional economic development. By facilitating free movement and harmonizing regulations, common markets strive to promote economic efficiency, growth, and prosperity among participating nations. Economic Union, Deepening Integration Through Comprehensive Economic Harmonization Economic Union represents a more advanced stage of economic integration that goes beyond the common market framework. It involves the establishment of a common market along with additional harmonization of economic policies, including the adoption of a common currency and coordinated fiscal policies. Here's an expanded explanation of the concept of an economic union and its key characteristics. 1. Common Market Foundation An economic union builds upon the foundation of a common market. This means that member countries have already eliminated trade barriers, allow free movement of goods, services, capital, and labor, and adopt a common external trade policy. The common market serves as the basis for further integration and cooperation. 2. Common currency. One key characteristic of an economic union is the adoption of a common currency among member countries. This typically involves the establishment of a central monetary authority that issues and manages the common currency. The common currency aims to facilitate seamless transactions, eliminate exchange rate fluctuations, and enhance economic stability and efficiency within the economic union. 3. Coordinated fiscal policies. In an economic union, member countries coordinate their fiscal policies to a greater extent. This includes aligning taxation systems, budgetary frameworks, and public expenditure priorities. The coordination of fiscal policies aims to promote economic convergence, ensure fiscal discipline, and mitigate economic imbalances within the economic union. 4. Harmonized economic regulations Economic unions often strive for further harmonization of economic regulations and standards among member countries. This includes aligning legal frameworks, product standards, and regulatory practices to facilitate the free movement of goods, services, and capital within the union. Harmonization helps reduce barriers to trade and fosters a level playing field for businesses operating across borders. 5. Enhanced economic cooperation an economic union represents a deepening of economic cooperation among member countries. It signifies a commitment to closer integration, shared economic goals, and a higher degree of policy coordination. Member countries collaborate on a range of economic issues, such as investment promotion, research and development initiatives, and addressing common challenges. 6. Enhanced policy influence by forming an economic union, member countries aim to enhance their collective policy influence on regional and international stages. Through unified positions and coordinated strategies, economic unions can present a more influential and coherent voice in global economic governance, trade negotiations, and other international forums. It's important to note that economic unions require a high level of commitment and cooperation among member countries. Deeper integration may involve relinquishing certain aspects of national sovereignty, as decisions on monetary policy and fiscal matters are made collectively. In summary, an economic union represents an advanced stage of economic integration, building upon the foundation of a common market. It involves the adoption of a common currency, coordinated fiscal policies, and further harmonization of economic regulations. Economic unions aim to deepen cooperation, enhance economic stability, and promote shared economic prosperity among member countries. Customs Union, harmonizing trade policies for internal and external trade. 
A customs union is an economic integration arrangement in which member countries eliminate trade barriers among themselves and adopt a common external tariff, CET, on imports from non-member countries. This type of integration aims to create a unified trading bloc and establish a consistent approach to trade relations with external nations. Here's an expanded explanation of the concept of a customs union and its key characteristics. 1. Removal of trade barriers. In a customs union, member countries eliminate trade barriers, such as tariffs, quotas, and other restrictions, on trade within the union. This facilitates the free movement of goods, services, capital, and labor among member countries, creating a more integrated and seamless trading environment. 2. Common External Tariff CET A crucial feature of a customs union is the adoption of a common external tariff. This means that member countries impose the same tariffs on imports from non-member countries. The CET ensures that all member countries apply a unified approach to trade with external nations, preventing the emergence of tariff differentials that could distort trade flows within the union. 3. Trade Liberalization By removing trade barriers within the customs union and adopting a common external tariff, member countries promote trade liberalization. This facilitates increased trade volumes, enhances market access for member countries' exports, and stimulates economic growth. Trade liberalization within the customs union aims to boost competitiveness, exploit economies of scale, and foster specialization among member countries. 4. Regulatory alignment. Customs unions often involve regulatory alignment among member countries. This includes harmonizing product standards, technical regulations, and customs procedures to facilitate the smooth flow of goods across borders. Regulatory alignment reduces barriers to trade, simplifies administrative processes, and enhances market integration within the customs union. 5. External Trade Policy Coordination Member countries coordinate their external trade policies within the customs union. This involves negotiating trade agreements, setting common positions in international trade negotiations, and developing a unified approach to trade relations with non-member countries. External trade policy coordination enhances the collective bargaining power of the customs union and enables member countries to pursue their economic interests more effectively on the global stage. 6. Economic cooperation. Customs unions foster economic cooperation among member countries. By eliminating trade barriers and harmonizing trade policies, member countries create a common economic space that encourages investment, enhances regional supply chains, and promotes closer economic ties. Economic cooperation within the customs union can lead to increased productivity, job creation, and shared benefits among member countries. It is important to note that customs unions may vary in terms of the depth of integration and the scope of harmonization achieved. Some customs unions may focus primarily on trade in goods, while others may extend their integration efforts to services, investment, and other areas of economic activity. In summary, a customs union is an economic integration arrangement where member countries remove trade barriers among themselves and adopt a common external tariff on imports from non-member countries. This fosters an integrated trading bloc, promotes trade liberalization, and enables coordinated external trade policy. Customs unions aim to enhance economic cooperation, stimulate growth, and create a unified approach to trade relations with external nations. Globalization, the growing interconnectedness of nations across various dimensions. Globalization refers to the ongoing process of increasing interconnectedness and interdependence among countries in various aspects, including trade, investment, technology, and cultural exchange. It signifies the breaking down of traditional barriers and the emergence of a more integrated and interconnected global community. Here's an expanded explanation of the concept of globalization and its key dimensions. 1. Economic globalization. Economic globalization is a significant aspect of the phenomenon. It involves the expansion of cross-border trade in goods and services, increased foreign direct investment, FDI, and the integration of global financial markets. Economic globalization has been facilitated by advancements in transportation, communication technology,
and liberalization of trade and investment policies. It has led to the emergence of global supply chains, the growth of multinational corporations, and increased interdependence among national economies. 2. Technological advancements, technological advancements, particularly in information and communication technologies, have played a vital role in driving globalization. The rapid dissemination of information, ease of communication, and increased connectivity have made it easier for businesses, individuals, and governments to interact and engage in global exchanges. Technological innovations have enabled the flow of ideas, knowledge, and innovations across borders, fostering collaboration and cooperation on a global scale. 3. Cultural exchange. Globalization has also facilitated cultural exchange and the diffusion of ideas, values, and practices across societies. Through increased travel, migration, and digital platforms, people are exposed to diverse cultures, traditions, and perspectives. This cultural exchange contributes to cultural diversity, cultural hybridization, and the creation of a global cultural identity. It also raises questions about cultural preservation, assimilation, and the balance between local traditions and global influences. 4. Political and social interconnections. Globalization has implications for political and social interactions among nations. It has led to the formation of international organizations, such as the United Nations and the World Trade Organization, aimed at fostering cooperation, addressing global challenges, and promoting international norms and standards. Globalization has also influenced social movements, activism, and the spread of ideas advocating for human rights, environmental sustainability, and social justice on a global scale. 5. Benefits and Challenges Globalization brings both benefits and challenges. On one hand, it has the potential to drive economic growth, promote innovation, and improve living standards by expanding access to goods, services, and opportunities. It fosters the sharing of knowledge, expertise, and best practices across borders. On the other hand, globalization can exacerbate inequalities, create economic disparities, and generate social and cultural tensions. It can also lead to environmental degradation and loss of local industries and traditions. 6. Policy Responses Globalization has prompted policymakers to navigate the complexities it presents. Governments employ various strategies to harness the benefits of globalization while mitigating its negative consequences. These strategies may include implementing trade agreements, fostering innovation and technological development, promoting education and skills training, and addressing social and environmental concerns. In summary, globalization encompasses the increasing interconnectedness and interdependence of countries through trade, investment, technology, and cultural exchange. It has transformed the way nations interact, creating opportunities and challenges in various spheres. Understanding globalization is crucial for navigating the complexities of an interconnected world and developing policies that promote inclusive and sustainable global development. Trade liberalization, facilitating freer flow of goods and services. Trade liberalization refers to the process of removing or reducing barriers to trade, including tariffs, quotas, and non-tariff barriers, with the aim of promoting a more open and freer flow of goods and services across national borders. It entails dismantling protectionist measures and creating an environment conducive to international trade. Here's an expanded explanation of trade liberalization and its significance. 1. Removal of tariffs. Tariffs are import taxes imposed on goods entering a country. Trade liberalization involves the reduction or elimination of tariffs, making imported goods more affordable and competitive in domestic markets. This helps stimulate imports, increase consumer choice, and encourage competition, leading to potential benefits such as lower prices and improved product quality for consumers. 2. Quota Elimination Quotas impose limits on the quantity or value of specific goods that can be imported. Trade liberalization seeks to eliminate quotas, allowing for increased imports and expanding market access for foreign suppliers. By removing quotas, 
countries provide opportunities for domestic businesses to access a wider range of goods and inputs from global markets, fostering competition and encouraging specialization. 3. Reduction of non-tariff barriers. Non-tariff barriers encompass various measures other than tariffs that restrict trade, such as licensing requirements, technical regulations, and sanitary and phytosanitary measures. Trade liberalization involves the reduction of non-tariff barriers, aiming to streamline trade procedures and create a more transparent and predictable trading environment. By harmonizing regulations and standards, countries can facilitate smoother trade flows while ensuring consumer safety and protection. 4. Market access. Trade liberalization promotes increased market access for goods and services. By reducing trade barriers, countries can tap into a larger consumer base, both domestically and internationally. Enhanced market access enables businesses to expand their customer reach, potentially leading to economies of scale, increased productivity, and improved competitiveness. 5. Economic growth and development. Trade liberalization is often viewed as a catalyst for economic growth and development. By encouraging international trade, it allows countries to leverage their comparative advantages and participate in global value chains. Trade liberalization fosters specialization in sectors where countries have a competitive edge, leading to increased productivity, job creation, and economic diversification. 6. International cooperation. Trade liberalization often occurs through bilateral or multilateral trade agreements, where countries negotiate and commit to reducing trade barriers. Such agreements promote cooperation among nations, establish rules for fair trade practices, and encourage a stable and predictable global trading system. International cooperation in trade liberalization contributes to economic stability and fosters mutually beneficial relationships among countries. It is important to note that while trade liberalization offers numerous benefits, it may also present challenges. Industries that are less competitive or face difficulties adjusting to increased competition may experience short-term disruptions. Governments often implement policies to address these challenges, such as providing support for affected sectors and investing in human capital development. In summary, trade liberalization involves the removal or reduction of trade barriers to promote a freer flow of goods and services across borders. It aims to expand market access, foster economic growth, and enhance international cooperation. Trade liberalization creates opportunities for businesses and consumers, drives specialization, and contributes to overall economic development. Bilateral Agreement Promoting trade and economic cooperation between two countries. A bilateral agreement refers to an agreement between two countries aimed at reducing trade barriers and promoting economic cooperation. These agreements are established with the goal of enhancing trade flows and strengthening economic ties between the involved nations. Here's an expanded explanation of bilateral agreements and their significance. 1. Trade Barrier Reduction a primary objective of bilateral agreements is the reduction of trade barriers between the participating countries. Trade barriers can include tariffs, import taxes, quotas, limits on imports, and non-tariff barriers, regulations, standards, and administrative procedures. By reducing or eliminating these barriers, bilateral agreements aim to facilitate the smooth flow of goods and services between the two nations, fostering increased trade volumes and economic exchanges. 2. Market Access Enhancement Bilateral agreements seek to enhance market access for goods and services between the two countries. By reducing trade barriers, businesses gain improved opportunities to enter and expand in each other's markets. Increased market access can lead to expanded customer bases, increased sales, and potential economic benefits for both countries. 3. Economic cooperation. Bilateral agreements go beyond trade barrier reduction and often involve broader economic cooperation initiatives. These initiatives may include collaboration in areas such as investment, technology transfer, intellectual property rights protection, and regulatory harmonization. Economic cooperation aims to create an environment conducive to business engagement, knowledge sharing, and mutual growth. 4. Dispute resolution mechanisms. 
Bilateral agreements typically establish mechanisms for resolving trade disputes that may arise between the participating countries. These mechanisms ensure that disagreements and conflicts related to trade issues can be addressed and resolved through negotiations and peaceful means. The inclusion of dispute resolution provisions helps maintain stable and predictable trade relations, enhancing the overall effectiveness of bilateral agreements. 5. Mutual Benefits Bilateral agreements are designed to bring mutual benefits to the participating countries. By promoting economic cooperation and reducing trade barriers, these agreements create opportunities for businesses to expand their market reach, increase competitiveness, and access resources and expertise from the partner country. The resulting economic growth and job creation contribute to the overall welfare and prosperity of both nations involved. 6. Flexibility and tailored approaches. Bilateral agreements provide flexibility for countries to negotiate terms that are specific to their unique circumstances and priorities. This flexibility allows countries to address specific challenges, capitalize on complementary strengths, and explore areas of cooperation that align with their respective economic interests. Bilateral agreements can be customized to suit the needs of the participating countries, facilitating targeted economic cooperation and trade expansion. Bilateral agreements are part of a broader landscape of international trade agreements that aim to promote global economic integration and cooperation. They complement multilateral trade agreements, such as those negotiated within the World Trade Organization, WTO, by allowing countries to pursue specific bilateral interests and deepen economic ties on a more focused scale. In summary, a bilateral agreement is a mutually beneficial arrangement between two countries that aims to reduce trade barriers and promote economic cooperation. These agreements enhance market access, foster economic growth, and facilitate greater engagement between the participating nations. By establishing specific terms and conditions, bilateral agreements provide a platform for targeted economic collaboration, contributing to the overall prosperity of the involved countries. Multilateral Agreement, Addressing Global Trade Issues Through International Cooperation A multilateral agreement refers to an agreement involving multiple countries aimed at addressing global trade issues and promoting international cooperation. These agreements are often negotiated within international organizations, such as the World Trade Organization, WTO, and involve multiple countries coming together to establish common rules and principles for global trade. Here's an expanded explanation of multilateral agreements and their significance. 1. Global Trade Issues Multilateral agreements are designed to tackle various global trade issues that transcend national boundaries. These issues may include reducing trade barriers, harmonizing trade regulations, facilitating market access, and resolving trade disputes. Multilateral agreements provide a platform for countries to collectively address these challenges and work towards mutually beneficial solutions on a global scale. 2. International Cooperation Multilateral agreements foster international cooperation by bringing together multiple countries with diverse interests and priorities. Through negotiations and dialogue, countries collaborate to establish common rules, principles, and frameworks for conducting international trade. Multilateral cooperation recognizes the interdependence of economies and promotes a rules-based global trading system that encourages fair, predictable, and transparent trade practices. 3. Role of international organizations International organizations like the World Trade Organization, WTO, play a significant role in facilitating multilateral agreements. These organizations provide a forum for negotiations, serve as platforms for member countries to discuss trade-related issues, and administer rules and procedures for resolving trade disputes. The involvement of international organizations helps ensure a fair and inclusive process for multilateral negotiations and implementation of agreed-upon measures. 4. Rules-Based Trade System Multilateral agreements contribute to the establishment of a rules-based trade system. Through these agreements, participating countries commit to adhering to common trade rules and principles. These rules cover areas such as non-discrimination, transparency, intellectual property rights, and dispute settlement. 
A rules-based system helps create a level playing field for all participants, promotes stability, and reduces uncertainties in international trade. 5. Trade liberalization and market access. Multilateral agreements often aim to promote trade liberalization and enhance market access for goods and services. Through the reduction of trade barriers, such as tariffs and quotas, countries seek to create more open and inclusive trade environments. This encourages increased trade volumes, fosters economic growth, and provides opportunities for businesses to expand their market reach globally. 6. Inclusiveness and Development Considerations Multilateral agreements recognize the diverse needs and priorities of participating countries, including those of developing economies. They emphasize the importance of ensuring that the benefits of global trade are inclusive and contribute to sustainable development. Special provisions may be included in these agreements to address the specific concerns and development challenges faced by developing countries, allowing them to participate effectively in global trade. Multilateral agreements play a crucial role in fostering cooperation, addressing global trade issues, and establishing a framework for international trade governance. By bringing together multiple countries, these agreements provide a platform for collective action, dialogue, and negotiation to promote fair and beneficial global trade practices. Through multilateral cooperation, countries strive to create a more interconnected, equitable, and prosperous global economy. In summary, a multilateral agreement involves multiple countries coming together to address global trade issues and promote international cooperation. These agreements foster a rules-based trade system, encourage trade liberalization, and enhance market access. By negotiating within international organizations, countries strive to establish common rules and frameworks for international trade, fostering stability and mutual benefits for all participants. International Monetary Fund, IMF Fostering Global Economic Stability and Growth The International Monetary Fund, IMF, is an international organization that plays a vital role in promoting global economic stability and growth. The IMF provides financial assistance, policy advice, and technical support to its member countries. Here's an expanded explanation of the IMF and its key functions. 1. Financial Assistance One of the primary functions of the IMF is to provide financial assistance to member countries facing economic challenges. Member countries can request financial support, often in the form of loans, to address balance of payment difficulties, stabilize their economies, and implement necessary economic reforms. The IMF provides financial assistance under various programs, tailored to the specific needs and circumstances of each country. 2. Policy Advice and Surveillance The IMF offers policy advice to its member countries to promote sound economic policies and practices. Through regular economic surveillance and analysis, the IMF monitors global and national economic trends, assesses potential risks, and provides recommendations to member countries. This policy advice covers a wide range of areas, including fiscal policy, monetary policy, exchange rate management, and structural reforms. 3. Technical assistance and capacity building. In addition to financial assistance and policy advice, the IMF provides technical assistance and capacity building to member countries. This support helps strengthen economic institutions, improve governance, enhance macroeconomic management, and build technical expertise in areas such as public finance, monetary policy, and financial sector regulation. Technical assistance helps countries develop the necessary skills and capabilities to effectively manage their economies and promote sustainable growth. 4. Crisis Prevention and Resolution The IMF plays a crucial role in crisis prevention and resolution. Through its surveillance activities, the IMF identifies vulnerabilities and risks in member countries' economies, providing early warnings and recommendations to address potential imbalances. In times of financial crises, the IMF works with countries to design and implement policy measures to restore stability and support economic recovery. The IMF also assists in debt restructuring and offers guidance on crisis management and resolution. 5. Global Economic Cooperation The IMF serves as a forum for global economic cooperation and dialogue among its member countries. 
It facilitates discussions on global economic issues, policy coordination, and international monetary system reforms. The IMF brings together policymakers, economists, and experts from around the world to exchange knowledge and best practices, fostering a collaborative approach to addressing global economic challenges. 6. Governance and Representation The IMF operates on a system of governance that ensures representation of its member countries. Decision-making within the IMF is based on voting power, with each member country's voting share reflecting its economic size. This system allows member countries to have a voice in shaping the policies and operations of the IMF. It is important to note that the IMF's activities are guided by its mandate to promote global economic stability, growth, and international monetary cooperation. The IMF collaborates with other international organizations, such as the World Bank and regional development banks, to support countries' efforts towards sustainable development. In summary, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, is an international organization that provides financial assistance, policy advice, and technical support to member countries. The IMF's role encompasses promoting global economic stability, crisis prevention and resolution, policy advice, technical assistance, and fostering global economic cooperation. Through its activities, the IMF seeks to support member countries in achieving sustainable economic growth and maintaining stability in the global economy. Caribbean Community, CARICOM Promoting Integration, Cooperation, and Development in the Caribbean Region The Caribbean Community, CARICOM, is a regional organization that brings together 15 Caribbean countries and dependencies with the aim of promoting economic integration, cooperation, and development within the region. Here's an expanded explanation of CARICOM and its key objectives. 1. Regional Integration CARICOM seeks to foster regional integration among its member countries. Regional integration involves the deepening of economic ties, coordination of policies, and harmonization of regulations to create a more unified and cohesive Caribbean community. By working together, member countries aim to overcome challenges, leverage their collective strengths, and pursue common goals. 2. Economic Cooperation CARICOM promotes economic cooperation among member countries, with a focus on expanding trade and investment within the region. Through trade agreements, preferential tariffs, and market access facilitation, CARICOM aims to enhance intra-regional trade and economic collaboration. Economic cooperation helps member countries tap into larger markets, promote competitiveness, and strengthen their resilience to global economic challenges. 3. Functional Cooperation CARICOM emphasizes functional cooperation in various areas of mutual interest, including education, health, security, and disaster management. By sharing resources, expertise, and best practices, member countries collaborate to address common challenges and enhance the overall well-being of their citizens. Functional cooperation fosters collaboration in areas such as education and skills development, public health initiatives, crime prevention, and disaster response. 4. Policy Coordination CARICOM facilitates policy coordination among member countries to address regional and global issues effectively. This coordination includes aligning positions on international matters, promoting regional perspectives in global forums, and advocating for common interests. Policy coordination strengthens the collective voice of CARICOM member countries, enabling them to engage in meaningful dialogue and negotiation on matters affecting the region. 5. Development programs and initiatives CARICOM implements various development programs and initiatives to support the socio-economic advancement of member countries. These programs may focus on areas such as poverty alleviation, infrastructure development, climate resilience, and sustainable energy. Through targeted initiatives, CARICOM aims to promote inclusive and sustainable development across the Caribbean region. 6. Strengthening Identity and Culture CARICOM recognizes the importance of preserving and promoting the Caribbean identity and culture. Member countries work together to protect cultural heritage, promote cultural industries, and celebrate the diversity and richness of Caribbean traditions. This emphasis on cultural preservation helps foster a sense of collective identity and promotes tourism, 
creativity, and cultural exchange within the region. CARICOM operates on the principle of decision-making by consensus, where member countries work together to reach agreements and make collective decisions. The organization facilitates regular meetings, summits, and consultations to foster dialogue and cooperation among its members. In summary, the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, is a regional organization comprising 15 Caribbean countries and dependencies. CARICOM aims to promote economic integration, cooperation, and development within the region through initiatives such as regional integration, economic and functional cooperation, policy coordination, development programs, and cultural preservation. By working together, CARICOM member countries strive to strengthen the Caribbean community, enhance regional resilience, and pursue shared prosperity and well-being. African, Caribbean, and Pacific Group of States, ACP Cooperative Partnership with the European Union for Economic and Development Agreements. The African, Caribbean, and Pacific Group of States, ACP, represents a collective of countries from Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific regions that have established economic and development cooperation agreements with the European Union, EU. This partnership aims to foster mutual collaboration, address common challenges, and promote sustainable development. Here's an expanded explanation of the ACP and its cooperative partnership with the EU. 1. Geographical Scope The ACP group comprises countries from three regions, Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific. This diverse group spans continents and encompasses nations with varying levels of economic development, social dynamics, and cultural heritage. The ACP group collectively engages with the EU in order to promote shared interests and address regional priorities. 2. Cooperation Agreements The ACP countries have established cooperation agreements with the European Union. These agreements provide a framework for economic, social, and development cooperation between the two entities. The most notable agreement is the Cotona Agreement, which was signed in 2000 and subsequently revised in 2010. The Cotona Agreement sets out the framework for cooperation, addressing issues such as trade, development assistance, political dialogue, and cooperation in various sectors. 3. Economic Cooperation A key focus of the ACPEU partnership is economic cooperation. The cooperation agreements aim to promote trade, investment, and market access between the ACP countries and the EU. Efforts are made to facilitate trade flows, reduce trade barriers, and promote sustainable economic development. The partnership seeks to enhance ACP countries' integration into the global economy and promote their economic growth and diversification. 4. Development Assistance the ACP-EU cooperation also involves development assistance from the EU to the ACP countries. This assistance aims to support sustainable development initiatives, poverty reduction, capacity building, infrastructure development, and other priority areas identified by the ACP countries. Development assistance programs are tailored to the specific needs and priorities of each ACP country, with the goal of fostering long-term socioeconomic development. 5. Political Dialogue The ACPEU partnership promotes political dialogue between the two entities. Regular meetings, consultations, and exchanges of views provide a platform for discussing shared challenges, exchanging perspectives, and promoting mutual understanding. Political dialogue focuses on various issues, including human rights, good governance, democratic principles, and global cooperation on pressing matters such as climate change and peacebuilding. 6. Strengthening Regional Integration The ACPEU partnership supports efforts to strengthen regional integration within the ACP regions. This involves promoting intra-regional trade, harmonizing policies, and fostering cooperation among ACP countries. Regional integration initiatives aim to enhance economic competitiveness, promote peace and stability and facilitate collective responses to regional challenges. The ACPEU partnership is dynamic and evolving, reflecting the changing priorities and needs of the ACP countries and the EU. Regular reviews and consultations take place to assess progress, identify areas for improvement, and adjust cooperation strategies accordingly. 
In summary, the African, Caribbean, and Pacific Group of States, ACP, represents countries from Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific that have established economic and development cooperation agreements with the European Union, EU. The ACP-EU partnership focuses on economic cooperation, development assistance, political dialogue, and strengthening regional integration within the ACP regions. The partnership aims to promote sustainable development, address common challenges, and foster mutually beneficial relations between the ACP countries and the EU. Free Trade Area of the Americas, FDAA Proposed Pan-American Trade Agreement The Free Trade Area of the Americas, FDAA, was a proposed trade agreement with the objective of establishing a free trade area encompassing all countries in the Americas, excluding Cuba. The FDAA aimed to deepen economic integration, enhance trade flows, and promote investment within the Americas. Here's an expanded explanation of the FTAA and its significance. 1. Pan-American Trade Integration The FTAA sought to promote trade integration across the entire American continent, from Canada in the north to Chile and Argentina in the south. The agreement aimed to eliminate trade barriers, including tariffs and non-tariff barriers, among participating countries. By creating a unified trade area, the FDA intended to enhance market access, stimulate economic growth, and facilitate cross-border investments. 2. Regional Economic Cooperation The FDA represented an ambitious effort to foster economic cooperation and strengthen ties among the countries of the Americas. It provided a platform for participating nations to engage in dialogue, negotiations, and coordination on trade-related issues. The agreement aimed to build upon existing regional trade arrangements, such as the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, and the Central American Free Trade Agreement, CAFTA, to achieve a comprehensive and integrated approach to trade in the region. 3. Trade Liberalization and Market Access At its core, the FTAA sought to promote trade liberalization by reducing or eliminating barriers to trade. This included the removal of tariffs, quotas, and other restrictions on the movement of goods and services. By expanding market access and encouraging intra-regional trade, the FDA aimed to stimulate economic activity, attract investments, and generate employment opportunities across the Americas. 4. Harmonization of Trade Rules The FDA envisioned the harmonization of trade rules and regulations among participating countries. This harmonization aimed to create a level playing field and establish common standards for trade-related matters, such as intellectual property rights, sanitary and phytosanitary measures, and technical regulations. By aligning rules and regulations, the FDA aimed to facilitate trade, reduce transaction costs, and enhance predictability for businesses operating within the region. 5. Exclusion of Cuba Notably, the FTAA excluded Cuba from participation. The exclusion of Cuba was a result of political considerations and differences in economic systems. While the FTAA aimed to promote integration across the Americas, the decision to exclude Cuba reflected the geopolitical landscape at the time when the proposal was being discussed. 6. Challenges and Abandonment Despite initial momentum, the FDA negotiations faced challenges and ultimately the agreement was not realized. Differing priorities, concerns over the potential impact on certain industries, and challenges in reconciling varying levels of economic development among participating countries contributed to the decision to abandon the agreement. Instead, focus shifted to pursuing smaller-scale regional trade agreements, bilateral agreements, and strengthening existing trade arrangements. Although the FTAA was not successfully implemented, discussions around the agreement helped foster dialogue on trade-related issues, regional economic integration, and the potential benefits of enhanced trade cooperation among countries in the Americas. In summary, the Free Trade Area of the Americas, FTAA, was a proposed trade agreement aimed at creating a comprehensive free trade area encompassing all countries in the Americas, excluding Cuba. The FTAA sought to deepen economic integration, liberalize trade, and enhance market access within the region. Despite its ultimate abandonment, 
the discussions surrounding the FTA contributed to the broader dialogue on regional economic cooperation and the pursuit of trade liberalization in the Americas. Association of Caribbean States, ACS Fostering Cooperation and Collaboration in the Caribbean and South American Regions The Association of Caribbean States, ACS, is a regional organization that brings together countries from the Caribbean and South American regions. The ACS aims to promote cooperation and collaboration among its member countries in various areas, including trade, transport, sustainable tourism, and disaster risk reduction. Here's an expanded explanation of the ACS and its key objectives. 1. Regional Cooperation The ACS focuses on fostering cooperation among its member countries, recognizing the shared challenges and opportunities within the Caribbean and South American regions. By promoting regional cooperation, the ACS aims to enhance collective efforts, pool resources, and address common issues of mutual concern. 2. Trade and Economic Cooperation one of the primary objectives of the ACS is to promote trade and economic cooperation among its member countries. The organization works towards creating an enabling environment for trade, investment, and economic growth within the region. This involves initiatives to facilitate trade flows, enhance market access, promote entrepreneurship, and encourage regional integration. 3. Transport Connectivity the ACS recognizes the importance of efficient and reliable transport connectivity for regional development. The organization encourages collaboration among member countries to improve transportation infrastructure, enhance maritime and air connectivity, and streamline logistical operations. By facilitating better transport links, the ACS aims to enhance regional trade, tourism, and overall economic connectivity. 4. Sustainable Tourism Development The ACS places significant emphasis on promoting sustainable tourism in the Caribbean and South American regions. Recognizing the importance of tourism as a key economic sector, the organization works towards sustainable tourism development. This involves initiatives to protect natural and cultural heritage, promote responsible tourism practices, enhance destination competitiveness, and foster cooperation among member countries in tourism-related activities. 5. Disaster Risk Reduction Given the vulnerability of the Caribbean region to natural disasters, the ACS prioritizes disaster risk reduction efforts. The organization aims to strengthen disaster preparedness, response, and recovery mechanisms. This involves sharing best practices, coordinating disaster management strategies, promoting resilience-building initiatives, and facilitating regional cooperation in disaster risk reduction. 6. Environmental and Sustainable Development The ACS recognizes the significance of environmental conservation and sustainable development in the region. The organization promotes cooperation among member countries to address environmental challenges, protect biodiversity, mitigate climate change impacts, and foster sustainable development practices. This includes initiatives related to renewable energy, conservation of marine resources, and the promotion of sustainable agriculture. The ACS operates through dialogue, consensus building, and collaboration among its member countries. Regular meetings, conferences, and specialized working groups facilitate discussions, knowledge exchange, and the development of joint initiatives to address regional priorities. In summary, the Association of Caribbean States, ACS, is a regional organization that promotes cooperation and collaboration among countries in the Caribbean and South American regions. The ACS focuses on areas such as trade, transport, sustainable tourism, and disaster risk reduction. Through its initiatives, the ACS aims to enhance economic growth, regional integration, environmental sustainability, and resilience in the Caribbean and South American regions. Caribbean and Canadian Association, Caribcan Facilitating Preferential Access to the Canadian Market The Caribbean and Canadian Association, Caribcan, represents an agreement between Canada and Caribbean countries, aimed at providing preferential access to the Canadian market for certain products. Caribcan seeks to foster economic cooperation, support development efforts, and promote trade between Canada and the Caribbean region. 
Here's an expanded explanation of Caribcon and its key features. Preferential market access. Caribcon offers Caribbean countries preferential access to the Canadian market for specific products. This preferential treatment involves reduced or eliminated tariffs and trade barriers on eligible goods. By granting favorable market access, Caribcon aims to stimulate trade flows, encourage exports from the Caribbean, and enhance economic integration between the two regions. Eligible products, Caribcon focuses on specific product categories that are of particular interest to Caribbean countries. These may include agricultural products, agrifoods, fish and seafood, textiles, apparel, and certain manufactured goods. By targeting these sectors, Caribcon aims to support the development of key industries in the Caribbean and enhance their competitiveness in the Canadian market. Trade facilitation and technical assistance, Caribcon provides support in trade facilitation and technical assistance to help Caribbean countries capitalize on the preferential access to the Canadian market. This may include capacity building initiatives, training programs, and assistance in meeting quality standards, regulations, and certification requirements. By enhancing the capacity of Caribbean exporters, Caribcon aims to facilitate smooth trade flows and improve market competitiveness. Economic cooperation and development, Caribcon serves as a platform for economic cooperation and development between Canada and the Caribbean region. The agreement fosters dialogue, information exchange, and collaboration on various economic issues of mutual interest. This includes discussions on trade policies, investment promotion, private sector development, and initiatives to support sustainable economic growth and poverty reduction in the Caribbean. Promoting investment, Caribcon also aims to promote investment flows between Canada and the Caribbean region. The agreement encourages Canadian investors to explore opportunities in the Caribbean, supporting initiatives that contribute to economic diversification, job creation, and technology transfer. By attracting investment, Caribcon aims to foster long-term economic development and strengthen economic ties between the two regions. Regular consultations, Caribcon involves regular consultations and discussions between Canada and the participating Caribbean countries. These consultations provide an opportunity to review the progress of the agreement, address challenges, and explore avenues for further cooperation. Through dialogue and mutual engagement, Caribcon seeks to ensure that the agreement remains relevant, responsive to evolving trade dynamics, and beneficial to all parties involved. Caribcon represents a targeted trade agreement between Canada and the Caribbean region, designed to provide preferential access to the Canadian market for specific products. The agreement seeks to support economic development, promote trade diversification, and deepen economic ties between Canada and the Caribbean. By facilitating market access and offering technical assistance, Caribcon aims to enhance trade flows, foster economic growth, and contribute to the sustainable development of the participating Caribbean countries. Caribbean Single Market and Economy, CSME Advancing Economic Integration and Free Movement in CARICOM The Caribbean Single Market and Economy, CSME, is an initiative within the Caribbean community, CARICOM, that aims to establish a single market and economy among its member countries. The CSME seeks to facilitate the free movement of goods, services, capital, and skilled labor within the Caribbean region. Here's an expanded explanation of the CSME and its key objectives. 1. Economic Integration the CSME represents a significant step towards deeper economic integration among CARICOM member countries. It aims to harmonize trade policies, remove barriers to regional trade, and promote a seamless economic environment within the Caribbean region. By creating a single market and economy, the CSME seeks to enhance economic cooperation, increase market access, and stimulate economic growth. 2. Free Movement of Goods a central aspect of the CSME is the elimination of trade barriers on goods among member countries. This involves the removal of tariffs, quotas, and other restrictions that hinder the free flow of goods within the region. By facilitating the movement of goods, the CSME aims to promote intra-regional trade, foster economies of scale, and improve competitiveness for Caribbean businesses. 3. Free Movement of Services 
The CSME also seeks to facilitate the free movement of services within the Caribbean region. This involves removing barriers to trade in services, such as professional services, tourism, and financial services, among others. By enabling service providers to operate across member countries without restrictive measures, the CSME aims to promote service sector growth, attract investment, and enhance regional competitiveness. 4. Free Movement of Capital The CSME encourages the free movement of capital within the Caribbean region. This involves removing restrictions on the flow of investment, capital transfers, and financial transactions among member countries. By facilitating capital movement, the CSME aims to promote investment, stimulate economic development, and foster a favorable environment for entrepreneurship and business expansion. 5. Free Movement of Skilled Labor A critical component of the CSME is the free movement of skilled labor within the Caribbean region. This involves the removal of barriers that impede the movement of professionals, including restrictions on work permits and qualifications recognition. By facilitating the mobility of skilled workers, the CSME aims to promote the exchange of expertise, address labor market gaps, and enhance regional cooperation in various sectors. 6. Harmonization of policies and regulations The CSME encourages the harmonization of policies and regulations among member countries. This includes aligning trade policies, intellectual property rights protection, technical standards, and regulatory frameworks to ensure a level playing field and facilitate economic integration. By harmonizing policies, the CSME aims to promote consistency, predictability, and a conducive business environment within the region. The CSME operates within the framework of CARICOM and involves ongoing consultations, negotiations, and coordination among member countries. Regular meetings, reviews, and assessments are conducted to monitor progress, address challenges, and identify opportunities for further integration and development. In summary, the Caribbean Single Market and Economy, CSME, is an initiative within CARICOM that seeks to establish a single market and economy among member countries. The CSME aims to facilitate the free movement of goods, services, capital, and skilled labor within the Caribbean region. By advancing economic integration, the CSME aims to enhance trade, stimulate economic growth, attract investment, and promote regional cooperation in the Caribbean. World Bank, promoting economic development and poverty reduction through financial support and technical assistance. The World Bank is an international financial institution that plays a crucial role in supporting economic development and poverty reduction efforts in its member countries. The World Bank provides loans, grants, and technical assistance to help countries address development challenges, promote sustainable growth, and improve living conditions. Here's an expanded explanation of the World Bank and its key functions. Financial support One of the primary functions of the World Bank is to provide financial support to member countries. This support is typically in the form of loans, credits, and grants. The World Bank offers different types of financing instruments tailored to specific country needs, including project-specific financing, budget support, and policy-based lending. The financial assistance aims to help countries implement development projects, invest in infrastructure, strengthen social programs, and undertake reforms that foster economic growth and poverty reduction. Technical assistance, in addition to financial support, the World Bank provides technical assistance and expertise to member countries. This assistance helps countries build capacity, improve institutions, and enhance policy formulation and implementation. The World Bank offers advisory services, knowledge sharing, and analytical support to help countries address specific development challenges and implement effective strategies. Technical assistance covers a wide range of areas, including public finance management, governance, education, health, infrastructure planning, and environmental sustainability. Poverty reduction, the World Bank places significant emphasis on poverty reduction as a core objective. Through its financial and technical assistance, the World Bank supports programs and projects that aim to alleviate poverty, improve access to basic services, and enhance social safety nets. 
The institution works with member countries to develop poverty reduction strategies, implement targeted interventions, and monitor progress in poverty reduction efforts. Development Focus The World Bank focuses on promoting sustainable economic development and addressing key development challenges. Its areas of focus include poverty eradication, inclusive growth, social development, climate change mitigation and adaptation, environmental sustainability, infrastructure development, and private sector engagement. The World Bank provides resources and expertise to help countries design and implement development programs that align with these priorities. Multilateral cooperation. The World Bank operates on a multilateral basis, with member countries as its shareholders. It collaborates closely with other international organizations, regional development banks, and stakeholders to leverage resources, share knowledge, and coordinate efforts for global development. The World Bank engages in partnerships and co-financing arrangements to maximize its impact and support collaborative approaches to development. Results Monitoring and Evaluation The World Bank places importance on monitoring and evaluating the outcomes of its projects and programs. It assesses the effectiveness of interventions, tracks progress in development goals, and measures the impact of its assistance. Monitoring and evaluation help ensure accountability, improve project design and implementation, and inform future decision-making for optimal development outcomes. In summary, the World Bank is an international financial institution that provides financial support, technical assistance, and knowledge sharing to member countries. Its primary objective is to promote economic development and poverty reduction. Through its activities, the World Bank supports countries in implementing development projects, strengthening institutions, addressing key challenges, and fostering sustainable growth. The institution plays a critical role in mobilizing resources, facilitating knowledge exchange, and fostering global cooperation for shared development goals. Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS Fostering Regional Cooperation, Economic Integration, and Security. The Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, is a regional organization that brings together several Eastern Caribbean countries. The primary goal of the OECS is to promote cooperation among its member countries in various areas, including trade, economic integration, and security. Here's an expanded explanation of the OECS and its key objectives. Regional cooperation. The OECS focuses on fostering cooperation among its member countries, recognizing the shared interests and challenges within the Eastern Caribbean region. Through collaboration and dialogue, the organization aims to strengthen regional ties, enhance policy coordination, and address common issues of mutual concern. Economic integration. A core objective of the OECS is to promote economic integration among member countries. This involves harmonizing trade policies, removing barriers to regional trade, and facilitating the movement of goods, services, capital, and skilled labor within the Eastern Caribbean region. By establishing a more integrated economic space, the OECS aims to enhance market access, stimulate economic growth, and improve the overall competitiveness of its member countries. Trade Facilitation The OECS seeks to facilitate trade among member countries and support the development of vibrant regional markets. The organization works towards reducing trade barriers, streamlining customs procedures, promoting regulatory harmonization, and fostering an enabling business environment. By facilitating trade, the OECS aims to enhance economic cooperation, promote entrepreneurship, and attract investments to the region. Economic diversification, recognizing the importance of economic diversification for sustained growth, the OECS encourages its member countries to diversify their economies beyond traditional sectors. The organization supports initiatives that promote innovation, entrepreneurship, and the development of new industries. By fostering economic diversification, the OECS aims to reduce vulnerabilities, create employment opportunities, and enhance the resilience of member countries' economies. Social development, the OECS places emphasis on social development, including initiatives to improve education, healthcare, social protection, and gender equality within the region. 
The organization works with member countries to address social challenges, enhance human capital development, and ensure inclusive and sustainable growth. By promoting social development, the OECS aims to improve the well-being and quality of life for the people of the Eastern Caribbean. Environmental Sustainability The OECS recognizes the importance of environmental sustainability and the need to address climate change and natural resource management. The organization supports initiatives to protect the environment, promote renewable energy, enhance climate resilience, and preserve the rich biodiversity of the Eastern Caribbean region. By prioritizing environmental sustainability, the OECS aims to ensure the long-term viability and sustainable development of its member countries. Security Cooperation The OECS places importance on security cooperation among its member countries. This involves collaboration in areas such as law enforcement, maritime security, border control, and disaster management. The organization works to enhance regional security frameworks, improve coordination, and share information and best practices. By promoting security cooperation, the OECS aims to address common security threats, strengthen regional stability, and ensure the safety and well-being of its member countries. The OECS operates through regular meetings, consultations, and technical cooperation among member countries. The organization facilitates policy dialogue, knowledge sharing, and joint initiatives to advance its objectives and address regional priorities. In summary, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, is a regional organization that promotes cooperation among several Eastern Caribbean countries. The OECS focuses on economic integration, trade facilitation, social development, environmental sustainability, and security cooperation. By fostering regional collaboration, the OECS aims to enhance economic growth, social well-being, environmental resilience, and security within the Eastern Caribbean region. European Union, EU Fostering Economic Integration, Cooperation, and Peace Among European Member States The European Union, EU, is an economic and political union comprising 27 European countries. The primary objective of the EU is to promote economic integration, cooperation, and peace among its member states. Here's an expanded explanation of the EU and its key functions. Economic Integration A fundamental goal of the EU is to foster economic integration among member states. This involves the establishment of a single market, where goods, services, capital, and labor can move freely across national borders without barriers. Through the removal of trade barriers, harmonization of regulations, and coordination of economic policies, the EU aims to enhance trade flows, stimulate economic growth, and improve the competitiveness of its member states. Customs Union The EU operates as a customs union, where member states apply a common external tariff on imports from non-member countries. This ensures a unified approach to trade with the rest of the world, promoting a level playing field for businesses within the EU and protecting their interests. The Customs Union fosters intra-EU trade by eliminating tariffs and reducing administrative burdens associated with customs procedures. Common Currency A significant milestone in the EU's economic integration is the adoption of the euro as the common currency by 19 member states. This shared currency facilitates trade, investment, and financial transactions within the eurozone, streamlining economic interactions and promoting stability. The euro enhances price transparency, eliminates exchange rate fluctuations, and simplifies cross-border business transactions. Policy Coordination The EU engages in policy coordination among its member states to address common challenges and promote collective decision-making. This includes coordination in areas such as trade, agriculture, regional development, environment, energy, and social policies. Policy coordination aims to harmonize standards, ensure coherence, and promote shared objectives across member states. Political cooperation The EU fosters political cooperation among member states to promote peace, stability, and democratic values within Europe. The EU provides a platform for member states to engage in dialogue, collaborate on foreign policy issues, and address shared security concerns. 
The EU's political cooperation includes efforts to resolve conflicts, promote human rights, support democratic governance, and uphold the rule of law. Regional development and cohesion. The EU aims to reduce economic disparities among its member states and promote regional development and cohesion. Through its structural funds and investment programs, the EU provides financial support for infrastructure development, innovation, research, and social cohesion initiatives in less developed regions. This helps to foster balanced economic growth and reduce socioeconomic disparities across the EU. Expansion and enlargement The EU has expanded over time through the accession of new member states. The enlargement process aims to promote stability, democracy, and economic development in candidate countries. Accession negotiations involve aligning candidate countries' policies and regulations with EU standards, ensuring that they meet the criteria for EU membership. Citizenship and rights The EU grants EU citizenship to its citizens, providing them with rights and freedoms that extend beyond national boundaries. EU citizens enjoy the freedom to live, work, study, and travel within the EU member states. EU citizenship also includes the right to vote and stand as candidates in European Parliament elections and access consular protection from any EU member state when travelling abroad. In summary, the European Union, EU, is an economic and political union of 27 European countries. The EU promotes economic integration, cooperation, and peace among its member states through initiatives such as the Single Market, Customs Union, Common Currency, policy coordination, and political cooperation. The EU also supports regional development, reduces economic disparities, and grants EU citizenship with associated rights and freedoms. The EU plays a vital role in shaping Europe's economic, social, and political landscape, fostering a sense of unity and collaboration among its member states. Caribbean Basin Initiative CBI facilitating trade preferences and duty-free access to the U.S. market. The Caribbean Basin Initiative, CBI, is a trade preference program initiated by the United States to support economic development and trade cooperation with certain Caribbean countries. The CBI provides duty-free access to the U.S. market for eligible products from participating Caribbean nations. Here's an expanded explanation of the CBI and its key features. Trade Preference Program The CBI is designed to promote trade and economic cooperation between the United States and select Caribbean countries. It offers trade preferences to eligible countries in the Caribbean Basin region, allowing them to export certain goods to the U.S. market with reduced or eliminated import duties. This trade preference program aims to enhance market access, stimulate export-oriented industries, and foster economic growth in the participating Caribbean nations. Duty-free access, a significant advantage of the CBI is the provision of duty-free access to the U.S. market for eligible products. This means that specific goods produced in the participating Caribbean countries can be exported to the United States without facing import duties. The duty-free access helps make Caribbean exports more competitive in the U.S. market, lowering costs for Caribbean exporters and facilitating increased trade flows. Eligible Caribbean Countries The CBI extends benefits to a group of designated Caribbean countries. These countries typically include those in the Caribbean Basin region, such as the countries of the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, the Dominican Republic, and certain Central American nations. However, it is important to note that specific eligibility criteria and product coverage may vary depending on the individual trade agreements and arrangements between the United States and each participating country. Product coverage The CBI covers a range of products that are eligible for duty-free treatment when exported to the United States. The eligible products often include agricultural goods, textiles and apparel, footwear, certain manufactured goods, and handicrafts, among others. The product coverage may be subject to specific rules of origin and other requirements outlined in the trade agreements between the United States and each participating Caribbean country. Development Objectives The CBI aims to support the economic development efforts of the participating Caribbean nations. By providing trade preferences and duty-free access, the initiative seeks to encourage investment, 
create employment opportunities, and enhance the competitiveness of Caribbean industries. The CBI also promotes diversification of Caribbean economies and the development of value-added sectors that can effectively capitalize on the trade preferences offered. Business and Investment Opportunities The CBI offers potential business and investment opportunities for both Caribbean exporters and U.S. importers. Caribbean exporters can take advantage of the duty-free access to the large U.S. market, expanding their customer base and increasing trade volumes. U.S. importers can source quality products from the participating Caribbean countries at competitive prices, benefiting from the cost savings derived from duty-free imports. Continued cooperation The CBI operates through continued cooperation and periodic consultations between the United States and the participating Caribbean nations. Regular discussions and reviews help ensure that the trade preferences provided under the CBI remain relevant, effective, and mutually beneficial. The initiative also allows for ongoing dialogue on issues related to trade facilitation, market access, and the development objectives of the participating countries. In summary, the Caribbean Basin Initiative, CBI, is a trade preference program initiated by the United States to support trade and economic development with select Caribbean countries. The CBI provides duty-free access to the U.S. market for eligible products, enhancing market access, stimulating export-oriented industries, and fostering economic growth in the participating Caribbean nations. By promoting trade cooperation and investment opportunities, the CBI aims to strengthen economic ties and mutual benefits between the United States and the Caribbean region. Caribbean Development Bank, CDB Driving Financing and Technical Assistance for Caribbean Development Projects The Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, is a regional financial institution dedicated to supporting economic and social development in the Caribbean region. The CDB provides financing and technical assistance for a wide range of development projects. Here's an expanded explanation of the CDB and its key functions. Regional Financial Institution As a regional financial institution, the CDB focuses on promoting economic growth, social progress, and sustainable development in its member countries within the Caribbean region. The bank operates as a cooperative institution, where member countries pool resources and collaborate to address development challenges collectively. Financing for development projects, the CDB plays a vital role in providing financial resources to support development projects in the Caribbean. It offers a range of financial instruments, including loans, grants, equity investments, and guarantees. These financial resources are channeled towards key sectors such as infrastructure development, agriculture, education, health, renewable energy, and private sector initiatives. The CDB's financing supports project implementation, fosters economic diversification, and contributes to poverty reduction and social advancement. Technical assistance and capacity building, in addition to financial support, the CDB provides technical assistance and capacity building to its member countries. This includes advisory services, training programs, and knowledge sharing activities. The technical assistance aims to enhance institutional capacity, improve policy formulation and implementation, and strengthen project management capabilities. By providing technical expertise, the CDB supports its member countries in effectively planning, implementing, and evaluating development initiatives. Safeguarding economic stability the CDB places importance on safeguarding economic stability in the Caribbean region. It assists member countries in addressing macroeconomic challenges, enhancing fiscal management, and promoting sustainable debt levels. The bank works in collaboration with governments and other stakeholders to formulate and implement policies that contribute to macroeconomic stability, fiscal sustainability, and overall economic resilience. Social Development and Poverty Reduction The CDB has a strong commitment to social development and poverty reduction. It supports initiatives that improve access to quality education, healthcare, water, sanitation, and social protection. The bank also promotes inclusive growth and economic opportunities for vulnerable groups, including women, youth, and marginalized communities. 
Through its development projects and programs, the CDB aims to foster social equity, reduce inequalities, and improve the well-being of the people in the Caribbean region. Private sector development, recognizing the importance of the private sector in driving economic growth, the CDB actively supports private sector development initiatives. The bank provides financing and technical assistance to promote entrepreneurship, attract investments, and enhance the competitiveness of private enterprises. By facilitating private sector engagement, the CDB contributes to job creation, innovation, and the overall economic resilience of the Caribbean region. Collaboration and Partnerships The CDB collaborates with other regional and international institutions, governments, and development partners to leverage resources and enhance development impact. It fosters partnerships to mobilize additional funding, share knowledge, and coordinate efforts for effective development outcomes. Collaboration and partnerships help strengthen the CDB's ability to support sustainable development and respond to evolving development priorities in the Caribbean region. In summary, the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, is a regional financial institution that provides financing, technical assistance, and capacity building for development projects in the Caribbean region. The CDB plays a crucial role in driving economic growth, social development, and poverty reduction. By offering financial resources, technical expertise, and fostering collaboration, the CDB contributes to the sustainable development and resilience of its member countries in the Caribbean. Foreign Direct Investment, FDI Promoting Cross-Border Investment and Business Expansion Foreign Direct Investment, FDI, refers to the investment made by a company or individual from one country into another country. It involves the establishment of a business presence or the acquisition of assets in the host country. FDI plays a significant role in promoting cross-border investment, driving economic growth, and fostering international business expansion. Here's an expanded explanation of FDI and its key characteristics. Types of FDI FDI can take various forms, including greenfield investments, where a company establishes a new subsidiary or facility in the host country, and brownfield investments, which involve acquiring an existing business or assets. FDI can also be classified as horizontal, where the investment is made in the same industry as the investor's home country operations, or vertical, involving investments in different stages of the production process or related industries. Motives for FDI Companies engage in FDI for several reasons. These may include accessing new markets, seeking natural resources, reducing production costs, tapping into skilled labor pools, diversifying business operations, expanding the customer base, acquiring technological capabilities, or gaining a competitive advantage. FDI offers opportunities for companies to leverage the advantages of different countries, such as market potential, resources, expertise, and favorable business environments. Host country benefits, FDI can bring numerous benefits to the host country's economy. It often leads to job creation, skill development, technology transfer, and knowledge spillovers. FDI inflows contribute to economic growth, increase investment levels, and enhance productivity. Additionally, FDI can stimulate domestic industries through backward and forward linkages, boost exports, and attract further investment in related sectors. Host country considerations. Host countries typically offer various incentives to attract FDI, such as tax breaks, investment promotion programs, streamlined regulations, infrastructure development, and favorable business environments. Governments also consider the potential impact of FDI on national industries, employment, environmental sustainability, and social development. Careful evaluation and strategic planning are crucial to maximize the benefits and mitigate any potential risks associated with FDI. Home country effects, FDI also influences the home country of the investing company. Outward FDI can allow companies to access new markets, gain global market share, diversify risks, and acquire strategic assets. Moreover, FDI can facilitate knowledge transfer and foster innovation within the home country, as companies learn from their international operations and exposure to different business environments. FDI and Economic Development 
FDI plays a significant role in fostering economic development, particularly in developing countries. It can contribute to capital formation, infrastructure development, technology diffusion, and job creation. FDI inflows can strengthen local industries, improve productivity, and enhance export competitiveness. To fully benefit from FDI, countries often establish policies and institutions that promote an attractive investment climate, protect investor rights, and ensure sustainable development outcomes. FDI and globalization FDI is closely linked to the process of globalization. It facilitates cross-border business integration, promotes international trade, and connects economies around the world. FDI flows reflect the interconnectedness of global markets and the increasing mobility of capital. It has become a key driver of economic globalization, encouraging collaboration, knowledge exchange, and the transfer of best practices across borders. FDI regulation Many countries have policies and regulations to govern and monitor FDI inflows, aiming to balance national interests and ensure that FDI aligns with their development objectives. These regulations may focus on sectors of strategic importance, national security considerations, competition policy, intellectual property rights protection, and environmental sustainability. Countries often strive to attract FDI while safeguarding their national interests and promoting sustainable development. In summary, foreign direct investment, FDI, involves investment made by a company or individual from one country into another country. FDI stimulates cross-border business expansion, facilitates international investment flows, and drives economic growth. It offers benefits to both the host and home countries, contributing to job creation, technology transfer, productivity enhancement, and economic development. FDI plays a significant role in the process of globalization and requires careful consideration and appropriate policies to maximize its positive impacts on sustainable development. Preferential tariff arrangements, encouraging trade cooperation through special trade treatment. Preferential tariff arrangements are trade agreements or policies that provide specific trade benefits, such as reduced tariffs or duty-free access, to certain products or countries. These arrangements are established to promote trade and economic cooperation between participating nations. Here's an expanded explanation of preferential tariff arrangements and an example of such an arrangement. Promoting trade Preferential tariff arrangements aim to stimulate trade flows and strengthen economic ties between participating countries. By offering favorable trade terms, such as lower tariffs or duty exemptions, these arrangements encourage increased trade volumes and facilitate market access for selected products or countries. Preferential tariff arrangements can create incentives for exporters, expand market opportunities, and enhance economic integration between participating nations. Reduced tariffs or duty-free access, one of the key features of preferential tariff arrangements is the provision of reduced tariffs or duty-free access. This means that certain goods originating from eligible countries can enter the markets of participating countries at lower or zero tariff rates compared to those applied to goods from non-participating countries. By reducing trade barriers, such as import duties, preferential tariff arrangements aim to enhance competitiveness, lower costs, and facilitate trade expansion for beneficiary countries. Promotion of regional integration, preferential tariff arrangements often foster regional integration among participating countries. By promoting intra-regional trade, these arrangements contribute to the development of regional value chains, the specialization of industries, and the growth of regional markets. They help strengthen economic cooperation, encourage investment flows, and support the development of regional supply chains and logistics networks. Enhancing economic partnerships, preferential tariff arrangements serve as instruments to strengthen economic partnerships between countries. They create a framework for dialogue, negotiations, and cooperation on trade-related matters. Through these arrangements, countries can establish mutually beneficial trade relationships, align their trade policies, and deepen their economic engagement. Preferential tariff arrangements provide a platform for countries to collaborate on issues such as market access, customs procedures, intellectual property rights, and technical standards. Example, 
Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA An example of a preferential tariff arrangement is the Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA, between the European Union, EU, and certain Caribbean countries. The EPA provides preferential tariff treatment to specific products exported from Caribbean countries to the EU market. Under this agreement, Caribbean exporters enjoy reduced tariffs or duty-free access to the EU market for eligible goods. The EPA aims to promote trade, economic integration, and sustainable development between the EU and Caribbean countries, supporting their efforts to diversify exports and strengthen their economies. Monitoring and Compliance Preferential tariff arrangements often require monitoring and compliance mechanisms to ensure that the agreed-upon trade preferences are effectively implemented and enforced. Participating countries may establish administrative procedures, rules of origin criteria, and verification mechanisms to ascertain that products meet the eligibility criteria and origin requirements specified in the arrangement. Regular review and evaluation Preferential tariff arrangements are subject to regular review and evaluation to assess their effectiveness, address challenges, and identify opportunities for further improvement. Participating countries engage in consultations, negotiations, and periodic assessments to ensure that the arrangement remains relevant, mutually beneficial, and supportive of the participating country's development objectives. In summary, preferential tariff arrangements are trade agreements or policies that grant specific trade benefits, such as reduced tariffs or duty-free access, to certain products or countries. These arrangements aim to promote trade, economic cooperation, and regional integration. By providing favorable trade terms, preferential tariff arrangements facilitate market access, lower costs, and encourage increased trade volumes. Such arrangements contribute to strengthening economic partnerships, fostering regional integration, and supporting the sustainable development efforts of participating countries. Benefits and Costs of CAICOM's Participation in Preferential Trade Arrangements Benefits of CAICOM's Participation in Preferential Trade Arrangements CAICOM's participation in preferential trade arrangements offers various advantages that contribute to the region's economic development and integration. Here are the key benefits associated with CAICOM's involvement in these arrangements. Increased market access, preferential trade arrangements provide CARICOM member states with improved access to larger and more lucrative markets. By reducing or eliminating tariffs and trade barriers, these arrangements expand market opportunities for Caribbean products, enabling greater export potential and access to a wider consumer base. Export diversification Participating in preferential trade arrangements encourages CARICOM countries to diversify their exports. By accessing new markets and enjoying preferential treatment for certain products, CARICOM nations can reduce their dependence on a limited range of exports. Export diversification helps to enhance economic resilience, reduce vulnerability to external shocks, and stimulate sustainable economic growth. Promotion of regional integration and cooperation, preferential trade arrangements support regional integration efforts within CARICOM. By aligning trade policies, harmonizing standards, and promoting collaboration among member states, these arrangements foster economic integration, deepen regional value chains and strengthen intra-regional trade flows. Regional integration contributes to economies of scale, increased competitiveness, and enhanced cooperation among CARICOM nations. Potential for attracting foreign investment, participating in preferential trade arrangements can enhance CAICOM's attractiveness as an investment destination. Access to larger markets, reduced trade barriers, and the integration of regional supply chains can attract foreign investors seeking to establish operations within CARICOM countries. Foreign investment brings capital, technology, expertise, and job opportunities, supporting economic growth and industrial development. Development of regional industries, preferential trade arrangements provide an opportunity for the development of regional industries within CARICOM. By capitalizing on the preferential treatment offered for specific products, member states can focus on building competitive industries that leverage their comparative advantages. This fosters the growth of domestic industries, encourages innovation, 
and contributes to the development of value-added sectors within the region. Costs of preferential trade while CAICOM's participation in preferential trade arrangements brings numerous benefits, there are also costs associated with these agreements. It is important to consider these factors when evaluating the impact of preferential trade on CARICOM member states. Increased competition from imports, preferential trade arrangements expose domestic industries to increased competition from imports. As trade barriers are reduced or eliminated, Caribbean markets become more accessible to foreign goods. This can put pressure on local industries, particularly those that are less competitive or lack economies of scale, potentially leading to job losses and economic challenges. Potential loss of domestic industries, the influx of imports under preferential trade arrangements can pose a risk to domestic industries, particularly those that cannot compete effectively in terms of cost, quality, or scale. In some cases, the preference given to certain imported goods may result in the decline or even closure of domestic industries, impacting employment and economic sustainability. Meeting international quality and standards requirements, participating in preferential trade arrangements often requires compliance with international quality and standards requirements. This can impose additional costs on CARICOM exporters as they must meet the expectations and regulations of target markets. Adhering to quality standards, product certifications, and conformity assessment processes may involve investment in technology, infrastructure, and capacity building. In summary, CARICOM's participation in preferential trade arrangements brings significant benefits, including increased market access, export diversification, regional integration, potential foreign investment, and the development of regional industries. However, it is important to consider the costs associated with preferential trade, such as heightened competition from imports, potential loss of domestic industries, and the need to meet international quality and standards requirements. By carefully managing these costs and leveraging the benefits, CARICOM can maximize the advantages offered by preferential trade arrangements while mitigating potential challenges. Trade liberalization, promoting free trade and economic growth through barrier reduction. Trade liberalization is a process that involves reducing or removing barriers to trade, such as tariffs, quotas, and non-tariff barriers. Its primary objective is to facilitate the freer flow of goods and services between countries, expand market access, foster healthy competition, and stimulate economic growth. Here's an expanded explanation of trade liberalization and its various pathways. Barrier Reduction Trade liberalization entails the reduction or elimination of trade barriers that impede the flow of goods and services across borders. Tariffs, which are taxes on imported goods, are commonly reduced or phased out as part of trade liberalization efforts. Additionally, quotas, which restrict the quantity of goods that can be imported, and non-tariff barriers like import licenses, technical regulations, and customs procedures, are addressed to foster smoother trade transactions. Promoting free trade, at its core, trade liberalization aims to promote free trade. By lowering barriers, countries encourage the exchange of goods and services based on comparative advantage, allowing businesses to access larger markets and consumers to benefit from a wider range of products at competitive prices. Free trade stimulates competition, innovation, and specialization, leading to increased efficiency, improved productivity, and overall economic welfare. Expanding market access, trade liberalization initiatives seek to expand market access for goods and services by dismantling barriers that hinder trade. By reducing import restrictions, businesses gain access to a broader customer base in foreign markets, enabling them to increase their sales and expand their operations. Improved market access opens up new opportunities for exporters, especially for countries with limited domestic markets or those seeking to diversify their export destinations. Fostering economic growth, trade liberalization is closely associated with economic growth. By removing trade barriers, countries can benefit from enhanced export opportunities, increased foreign direct investment, FDI, and the inflow of capital and technology. These factors contribute to greater competitiveness, productivity gains, job creation, and overall economic expansion. 
Trade liberalization can also stimulate investment in industries that have a comparative advantage, promoting their development and driving economic diversification. Bilateral and multilateral approaches, trade liberalization can be pursued through both bilateral and multilateral approaches. Bilateral agreements involve negotiations and the mutual reduction of trade barriers between two countries. These agreements allow countries to address specific trade issues, customize trade preferences, and establish closer economic ties. On the other hand, multilateral approaches involve negotiations within international organizations like the World Trade Organization, WTO, where multiple countries work together to establish common rules, reduce trade barriers, and resolve trade disputes. Role of international organizations International organizations, such as the WTO, play a vital role in facilitating trade liberalization. These organizations provide platforms for member countries to engage in negotiations, establish rules, and address trade-related issues. They also oversee the implementation of trade agreements and provide mechanisms for resolving disputes, ensuring a rules-based and transparent trading system. The WTO's multilateral trading system encourages trade liberalization by promoting non-discriminatory treatment, transparency, and predictability in global trade. Regional integration initiatives, regional integration initiatives, such as the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, also contribute to trade liberalization. These initiatives involve cooperation among neighboring countries to deepen economic integration, reduce trade barriers, and harmonize trade policies. Regional integration fosters regional value chains, enhances market access within the region, and promotes closer economic ties. By pooling resources and coordinating efforts, countries can benefit from economies of scale, attract investment, and leverage their collective strengths to enhance competitiveness. In summary, trade liberalization is the process of reducing or removing barriers to trade, promoting the freer flow of goods and services across borders. It aims to expand market access, foster competition, stimulate economic growth, and promote free trade. Trade liberalization can be pursued through bilateral agreements, multilateral negotiations within international organizations, or regional integration initiatives. By embracing trade liberalization, countries can harness the benefits of international trade, strengthen their economies, and contribute to global prosperity. Globalization, enhancing interconnectedness and integration in the modern world. Globalization is a multifaceted phenomenon that encompasses the growing interconnectedness and interdependence of countries across economic, social, cultural, and technological domains. It signifies the integration of national economies into the global economy, resulting in heightened trade, investment flows, technological advancements, and cultural exchange. Here's an expanded explanation of globalization and its key elements. Interconnectedness and interdependence. At its core, globalization highlights the deepening connections and interdependencies among countries worldwide. The increasing ease of communication, transportation, and information exchange has facilitated closer interactions and collaboration among individuals, businesses, and governments across borders. As a result, countries have become more reliant on each other for economic, social, and technological progress. Integration of national economies. Globalization involves the integration of national economies into the global economic system. Through trade liberalization, reduced barriers, and advances in transportation and communication, countries have become more intertwined in terms of their production, consumption, and investment patterns. Global supply chains have emerged, allowing different stages of production to be distributed across multiple countries, optimizing efficiency and leveraging comparative advantages. Increased trade and investment flows, globalization has fueled a substantial expansion in international trade and investment. Countries are engaging in trade activities on a larger scale, exchanging goods and services across borders to meet global demand. Foreign direct investment, FDI, has also surged, with companies seeking opportunities beyond their home countries to establish operations, tap into new markets, and access resources or skilled labor. 
The growth of trade and investment flows has led to the creation of global value chains and boosted economic growth. Technological advancements, technological progress has been a driving force behind globalization. Innovations in transportation, communication, and information technology have drastically reduced the cost and time required for interactions across borders. The internet, digital platforms, and advancements in telecommunications have facilitated instant communication, enabled e-commerce, and provided seamless access to information and knowledge. Technological advancements have accelerated the pace of globalization and transformed the way individuals, businesses, and governments engage with each other. Cultural exchange and diversity, globalization has fostered cultural exchange and the sharing of ideas, values, and traditions. The interconnectedness of people from different parts of the world has facilitated the spread of cultural influences, leading to a richer global tapestry. Cultural diversity is celebrated and embraced, allowing individuals to experience and learn from different perspectives, fostering tolerance, understanding, and appreciation for various cultures. Opportunities for international trade, globalization has opened up vast opportunities for international trade. Countries can leverage their comparative advantages and specialize in producing goods and services in which they excel. Access to global markets allows businesses to reach a broader customer base, expand their operations, and benefit from economies of scale. International trade encourages competition, stimulates innovation, and drives economic growth. Mobility of capital and information, globalization has facilitated the mobility of capital and information. Financial markets have become more interconnected, allowing capital to flow across borders to seek the most attractive investment opportunities. Investors can diversify their portfolios and access a wider range of investment options globally. Moreover, the rapid dissemination of information enables individuals and businesses to stay connected, access knowledge, and adapt to changing market dynamics more efficiently. In summary, globalization represents the increasing interconnectedness and interdependence of countries in economic, social, cultural, and technological aspects. It involves the integration of national economies into the global economy, fostering greater trade, investment flows, technological advancements, and cultural exchange. Globalization has expanded opportunities for international trade, enhanced the mobility of capital, and facilitated the rapid spread of information and technology. While globalization offers numerous benefits, its impacts are complex and require careful management to ensure inclusive and sustainable outcomes for countries and individuals in an increasingly interconnected world. Major Economic Features of Globalization – Facilitating Integration and Connectivity Globalization encompasses several significant economic features that have transformed the world economy, facilitating integration, and enhancing connectivity across national borders. These features have shaped the way countries interact, trade, invest, and communicate on a global scale. Here's an expanded explanation of the major economic features of globalization. Free movement of goods, capital, labor, and technology Globalization has fostered the free movement of goods, capital, labor, and technology across national borders. Trade liberalization initiatives, such as reduced tariffs and trade barriers, have facilitated the flow of goods and services between countries. Capital has become more mobile, with increased cross-border investments and financial transactions. Labor markets have expanded, enabling skilled workers to seek employment opportunities abroad. Technological advancements have facilitated the rapid dissemination and exchange of ideas, innovations, and knowledge globally. Increased international trade and foreign direct investment, FDI globalization has led to a significant increase in international trade and foreign direct investment, FDI. Countries have embraced open trade policies, resulting in a surge in the exchange of goods and services across borders. International trade has played a pivotal role in driving economic growth, fostering competition, and promoting specialization. Foreign direct investment involves companies establishing operations or acquiring assets in foreign countries to tap into new markets, access resources, or benefit from favorable business environments. 
Global supply chains. Global supply chains have emerged as a critical feature of globalization. Companies now coordinate production activities across different countries, creating complex networks that optimize efficiency and leverage comparative advantages. Each stage of the production process may take place in different countries, with components and raw materials sourced globally. This interconnectivity enables businesses to achieve cost savings, access specialized inputs, and respond to changing market demands effectively. Emergence of multinational corporations, MNCs globalization has given rise to multinational corporations, MNCs, that operate in multiple countries. MNCs leverage global resources, technologies, and markets to expand their operations beyond their home countries. They establish subsidiaries, engage in cross-border mergers and acquisitions, and operate in diverse industries across the globe. MNCs contribute to economic development, generate employment opportunities, and drive innovation through their global reach and investments. Integration of financial markets. Financial markets have become increasingly integrated as a result of globalization. Cross-border capital flows have intensified, with investments shifting across countries in search of favorable returns. Global financial markets enable countries to access international capital and financing for investment projects, infrastructure development, and economic growth. The integration of financial markets offers opportunities for diversification, risk sharing, and access to a broader range of financial instruments and services. Growth of global communication networks. Globalization has witnessed the remarkable growth of global communication networks particularly with the advent of the internet, digital platforms, and advancements in telecommunications. These networks facilitate instant communication, enable seamless exchange of information, and connect individuals, businesses, and governments worldwide. Global communication networks have transformed the way people interact, conduct business, access knowledge, and engage in cultural exchange. These major economic features of globalization have profoundly reshaped the global economy, transforming trade, investment, production, and communication patterns. They have facilitated greater integration and connectivity among countries, enabling the exchange of goods, services, capital, labor, and knowledge on an unprecedented scale. While these features offer numerous opportunities for economic growth and development, they also present challenges that require effective governance, policies, and international cooperation to ensure that globalization's benefits are inclusive, sustainable, and shared by all. Producing goods in large quantities, unlocking social and economic advantages. Producing goods in large quantities can yield significant social and economic benefits. Leveraging economies of scale. Such production practices contribute to lower production costs, increased efficiency, and enhanced competitiveness. Moreover, large-scale production enables investments in advanced technologies, research and development, and innovation, fostering higher productivity and driving economic growth. Here's an expanded explanation of the advantages associated with producing goods in large quantities. Economies of scale, when goods are produced in large quantities, economies of scale come into play. This means that as production volume increases, the average cost per unit decreases. By spreading fixed costs, such as infrastructure, equipment, and overhead expenses, over a larger output, per unit production costs decline. Economies of scale arise from the ability to achieve greater specialization, optimize production processes, and negotiate better terms with suppliers. Lower production costs, in turn, enable businesses to offer competitive prices to consumers and potentially increase their profit margins. Increased efficiency, large-scale production often leads to improved efficiency in various aspects of the production process. With higher production volumes, businesses can streamline operations, reduce waste, and optimize resource allocation. Processes can be automated, standardized, and fine-tuned to enhance productivity. Efficient production practices allow businesses to meet market demand more effectively, reduce delivery times, and improve customer satisfaction.
Moreover, economies of scale can also extend to the procurement of raw materials and components, allowing businesses to negotiate bulk discounts and achieve cost savings. Enhanced competitiveness, large-scale production can enhance a company's competitiveness in the marketplace. Lower production costs enable businesses to offer products at more attractive prices compared to competitors with higher production costs. This can result in increased market share and customer loyalty. Moreover, efficient and cost-effective production can also free up resources that can be reinvested in marketing, research and development, or expansion, further strengthening a company's competitive position. Investment in advanced technologies, research and development, and innovation, large-scale production often generates higher revenues and profitability, providing businesses with the financial resources to invest in advanced technologies, research and development, R&D, and innovation. Investments in machinery, automation, and digital technologies can improve production processes, enhance quality control, and increase output capacity. R&D efforts can lead to the creation of new products, improved production techniques, or the optimization of existing goods. Innovation and technological advancements contribute to higher productivity levels, improved product offerings, and the potential for market expansion. Higher productivity and economic growth, large-scale production, fueled by economies of scale, increased efficiency, and investments in technology and innovation, can result in higher productivity levels. With higher productivity, more goods can be produced using the same amount of resources or the same amount of goods can be produced using fewer resources. Increased productivity is a key driver of economic growth, as it allows for the production of more goods and services, job creation, and rising living standards. Moreover, higher productivity can also generate positive spillover effects on related industries and sectors, fostering overall economic development. In summary, producing goods in large quantities offers various social and economic benefits. Economies of scale lead to lower production costs, increased efficiency, and enhanced competitiveness. Large-scale production facilitates investment in advanced technologies, research and development, and innovation, driving higher productivity levels and contributing to economic growth. By capitalizing on these advantages, businesses can achieve cost savings, offer competitive prices, invest in innovation, and contribute to the overall development and prosperity of economies.